Welcome everyone to Jewel TV. I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, we are live today broadcasting from Bend, Oregon. It's like someone just, there's Beth, there she is. So wave hi. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk product line development today. I really think this is a, just a critical topic and with 2017 having just kicked off and uh, all of us kind of restructuring our pricing and redoing, <laughs> excuse me, our product line. It's important to think about some critical things and uh, make sure we're doing the right thing for our business and our profitability. So that's what today's topic is all about. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen one more time and we will uh, get into today's topic. So there we go, I'm here on my own today so you'll have to forgive me, there we go. I'll still go ahead and start playing. So, you know, a lot of us ask this question when we get to a new year, what products should you sell in that year? And that, of course, is the focus of today's topic. It's episode 20 here for Talk A Latte, which, of course, is now Jewel TV, and this is brought to you by uh, Jewel TV. If you'd like to get more on Jewel TV, past episodes, and the today's freebie, you want to go to jewel-tv.com and opt in to see the archives as well as get the freebies for all the archives and this episode will be there later on today once we take the recording trim it up a bit it will be put on the archives as well so to get there what you do is you'll see this opt-in box on the jewel-tv.com page go ahead and put in your first and last name and your email that will give you access of course to the freebie and all past episodes on top of that, you'll get notification when we're about to air live and uh, also when, we, when the archive is ready for you to watch as a recording. So let's get into today's topic. What products should you carry in 2017? Well, the six factors to a great product line are what I want to focus on today. And if you nail these six factors, you should have a pretty good suite of things you can offer your client. And you know, this ranges in everything from printed products, wall portraits, albums, even digital files and digital products. Every product can be applied, well, the six factor test, I should say, can be applied to every single product you wanna carry in your studio. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is saleability. Number one in the six factors to test, will it sell in my market? Something important to ask. So to kind of follow up with that, the questions you want to further ask are, number one, does my ideal client even want it? Is it something that's going to sell? Is it in demand? In other words, are your clients looking for that product? And we all know that most clients love digital files, right? They're all always asking, do you sell the digitals? Do you sell the digitals? It's just like back in the day when I first started and we were doing um, negatives, you know, like film, everybody wanted to know if we, how much an eight by 10 was or gift prints. That's all they were thinking about was gift prints, gift prints, gift prints. And the big thing back then was trying to avoid selling gift prints and instead sell large portraits to our clients, wall portraits. And it's the same thing today. The products have just changed. Nowadays, everybody wants the digitals. The digitals are still an important factor in the product line, but they're not the it factor necessarily. So ask yourself, Will it sell in my market? Does my client even want it? Is it in demand? Then is it unique? Is it something that maybe your ideal client can't find anywhere else? And then is it readily available? Are other photographers carrying it as well? And that's where you kind of have to ask yourself, do I really want to carry something that everyone else is carrying? Well, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. It depends on how profitable it is and how much time it takes to create, if it suits your brand, all those big questions. And of course, we're gonna get into those in just a minute. So what's number two of the six factor test? Well, cost. What will you as a business owner pay for it? What is the hard cost of the product? And what is the time cost of the product? And you all know that you know, you're supposed to stay within this magical 20% cost of sale thing that everybody talks about. Well, that is definitely true. But there are other factors that go along with that. And cost is just one tiny part of the six factor test. The third thing is the perceived value and cost perceived value. And number four 
which I'll tell to, uh, you know, talk to you about in a second, all go together and they all intermix, they all relate to one another. So number two, cost. Number three, perceived value. Does the product look expensive? In other words, is it high quality luxury materials? Does the client quote see it as expensive? Do they perceive it to be something that has high value? And does it take a lot of time to create? That adds to its perceived value. Like to me, albums take a long time to create, or at least in the client's mind, they do. And you know, some software out there helps us this day and age to make things faster. But overall, designing an album for the client is a process. I mean, if they were gonna do it themselves, it would take them hours to put the album together, to pick which images, to do the design and the layout, et cetera, et cetera. So that has a high perceived value to the client and um, a skill set involved. There's a talent to actually putting an album together. So remember, we're on number three. Number two was cost. Number three is perceived value. Number four, profitability. Will it make me money when I sell it? And number two, number three, and number four are very much intertwined. If the cost is low to you, but yet it's a high perceived value product to the client, then chances are it could be profitable. So you have to ask yourself, what can I charge the client? What's the retail price for this? And what is my COS percentage? Now, we have so many expenses as photographers. We have overhead if we've got a studio. We have employee costs if we have employees. We have product costs. We have taxes. We have liability insurance. We have um, things like uh, education and equipment and, and software and stuff that needs to be replaced every single year. Insurance alone, especially for us baby photographers, is huge. So we have a lot of overhead costs, which means that our products, we need to charge enough for them that we can cover our costs, make a living in doing what we're doing, and actually provide the client with a good product. So profitability, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but mainly ask yourself, based on the hard cost of the product, the perceived value, the time factor of what you put into it, what can you charge for the product? Will I profit from this product's sale? And then number five, another thing that intertwines with these six factors is time production. What kind of time will it take for me to produce this product? In other words, if you broke your arm tomorrow and had to hire someone to create the product for you, what would you have to pay them on top of the hard product cost, et cetera, et cetera? So, Ask yourself questions like, is it custom design? In other words, time. Will I have to put my time into this? Does this, make, does this uh, product have a lot of Photoshop work involved with it? Am I retouching you know, 20, 30, 40 images rather than just one for a wall portrait? How hard is it to order from the supplier? In other words, does it take a lot of time to open up the supplier software and upload the, the images to the software and order the product? There's some album companies where it's just crazy time to actually order one product. It takes like an hour or two just to get an album uploaded. And that adds cost. Whenever something takes a long time, whether it be to create the product, to order the product, or even the product taking a long time to arrive to you, that is extra time that needs to be tacked on to the cost of the product. So can you see how one, two, three, four, five all intertwine with one another? They all are factors when it comes to determining what your product line should be. Do you see that? Well, let's look at number six. Number six could be the most important thing, and that is your brand. Does the product match your brand? So ask yourself, you know, we, we go to these trade shows, to these big photography, these national conventions. I mean, WPBI just ended, Imaging USA ended about a month ago. We go to these trade shows and we get glossed over deer in the headlights look at all these beautiful things that the labs and printers are trying to, to get us to buy as retailers. And it's hard to resist because some of them are so beautiful, but you must ask yourself, does this product align with who I am as an artist and what my business represents? Does the product look like it belongs in the business? Like, for example, you know, I'm a baby photographer. I have a very farmhouse, organic, textural style. 
My brand is very simple and clean. My brand suits babies. I don't have things that are super shiny in my studio. So I carry a lot of matte papers and products. I don't carry metal prints or things on crystal or just shiny, flashy stuff. It doesn't suit my brand. So yes, when I go to these trade shows, I see all these amazing, beautiful products that Miller's is coming out with and White House and all these great labs. And I go, oh my gosh, that would be so fun to carry in our studio. But I always have to check myself. I always have to say, mm, is that really worth spending the money on to get samples, to design, to work hard, to create that new product? I don't know. It doesn't really suit my brand. It's not what my clients would expect from me. So ask yourself every time you're about to put a new product in your studio, does it align with my brand? Does it look like it belongs here in the studio? Would my clients expect this? So now we combine the six factors. If you analyze a product and you see that it's low cost, that it has a big perceived value to the client, it looks expensive, it fits your brand, you can charge a profitable price, and it has a low time production value, woohoo, you just hit the jackpot. That is a product you should be carrying in your studio, okay? But just because something has a high time production value doesn't mean you shouldn't carry it. If it's got a low cost, in other words, it's fairly inexpensive for you to purchase as a product, and it has a big perceived value, meaning your profit margin is huge on the product, then a little extra time it takes to create it, to get it, all these, to order it may not matter so much. That may be okay because it's a product that totally fits within your brand. It's exactly what you want to carry for your client and you can make a decent amount of money off of it. Then adding a little time to it isn't really a big deal. But if the product has a high cost and it has an okay perceived value, then you may want to consider if you want to carry it or not. And this is where packaging products become so critical. So say, for example, canvases or holiday cards, things like that. Holiday cards are crazy expensive and they take a ton of time to produce. You guys all know that, right? To, to put a card together in Photoshop, design it, put in the custom text, all that stuff. It takes a long time. On top of that, the cards are crazy expensive. I mean, really, you... the the profit margins are not that great on cards, but our clients love Christmas cards. And if you can't get Christmas cards from your photographer, then you have to go to minted or to tiny prints or something like that. And it's a pain for the client. You're not offering the service you want to you provide to them. So you need to carry the holiday cards. But if a client came in, did a session and just wanted holiday cards, there's no way you would actually profit off that session. As a matter of fact, it would be a losing session and chances are you would be paying that client figuratively to take their picture, right? So this is where packaging comes into play. My clients can't really buy Christmas cards or holiday cards or birthday cards or anything like that unless they purchase wall art and digital files. And so those digital files, because they have a high perceived value and a fairly low cost, you know, we're producing them anyway for, for, the, um, for the client, I can sell them at a very good profit margin and that makes up for the fact that I'm offering other products, my client wants Christmas cards that are more expensive. Does that make sense? So packaging products with things, you know, high, high dollar products that cost you a lot with products that don't necessarily cost you a lot then you have a great package to put together that is a profitable one for you and your studio. And you know, one thing about digital files, digital files are, there's a, there's a huge lost opportunity cost with those. And you know, every client wants them. And of course we offer them in our studio Our all of our clients go home with digital files, but here's what's important to remember. Digital files are one of those things here. I'll, I'll so you guys can actually see my face. Digital files are one of those things where they don't cost a lot for you to produce. I mean, you're shooting the session anyway. They've paid you a session fee. I mean, really, you're just your time and effort to enhance the images and put them on a USB drive is about it, right? But that doesn't mean that you should sell them inexpensively or for cheap because there's a huge lost opportunity cost that comes when you sell the digital files. Number one, when you do that, you're allowing your client to basically print anything they want at any time they want at cost. You will never make another dime off those files again when you sell them. That's your livelihood, your skill, your talent set, your artistry, your creativity, your mind and your skill set with a camera, you are now selling and you can never make money off what you've done again. 
So that's a huge value for the client to be able to have unlimited personal printing rights for images. That is a huge value. So you have to charge for that, okay? I know a lot of photographers out there sell things at inexpensive prices. They're trying to get started in the market and that's all fine and dandy and awesome and I, I totally understand why. But consider that cost to you as an artist when you sell those digitals for an inexpensive price. When you sell them at a profitable rate and combine them with printed products so the client is actually getting a service out of it and they're actually getting something printed. I mean, really, how many of us have actually like printed anything that's on our iPhone? Like, I haven't. <laughs> I've got thousands of pictures on my iPhone and I've barely printed maybe a, a two dozen of them at the most. And that is so sad. And our clients are the same way. So when you offer the service to them of actually, for lack of a better term, forcing them to print something, number one, they are actually grateful because they have something beautiful to put on the wall that they would have never taken the time to do. And yes, they want the digitals because they want to feel like they can at any time print in the future which of course, wouldn't you want to do that too? But at the same time, they never do. I mean, they get shoved in a drawer and that's that and it's, oh, it's heartbreaking. So don't let your clients do that to themselves, I guess is what I'm saying. So let me go ahead and share a screen one more time and uh, we'll get back into the presentation and talk about uh, how to actually sort this out in your own business. So those six factors, the biggest bottom line I can tell you is don't carry the kitchen sink. <laughs> yeah, right, Julia. What does that mean, right? That means don't try to carry everything. We get lured by these trade shows that are all beautiful and fancy products and the labs offer hundreds of different things for us to, to invest in with them and offer our clients. It can get seriously overwhelming to the client if you try to offer them too much. So pick a few products that work for you and your business and leave it at that. Add slowly over time, see which things sell and which don't, and then tailor and edit your product line from there. So today's freebie is the product development worksheet. And how this works is you, on the left there under product, I want you to list out every single product that you actually carry and products you want to carry that you're thinking about doing for 2017. Then in the next column, I want you to put your hard costs, like what it actually costs you from the lab, the, the dollar amount, the pennies, nickels, and dimes that you have to pay to actually get that produced. And it can include time as well. If you're doing an album or something like that that takes an enormous amount of time or retouching, anything like that, add that into the cost. Then, on this third column, I want you to put down what you can charge for it. So keep in mind that 20% cost of sale, 30% is what PPA says. Uh, that's, a, that's a number you need to kind of figure out yourself, but I would not go higher than 30% by any means. As a matter of fact, that's a little too high for me. Based on my own costs and what I have to take care of here in the studio, there's no way that I could even cover my costs if I didn't keep my, my cost of sales at 20%. So then, of course, the difference between that is the profit in the fourth column. Then on the um, perceived value com column, I want you to just talk to yourself about how you think the client perceives the product. Is it a high value? Or you, can you educate the client that it's a high value? Then, does it suit your brand? Yes or no, maybe so. Then finally, the pros and cons to carrying the product. Based on these six factors, five, six factors that you've put in here, what are the pros and cons? Will it sell in your market? Is it in high demand? Does it take a lot of time to produce? Write down the pros and cons of each product in those last two columns, and that will really help you decide if it's something that you should carry or not. For us, one of my most popular products here in the studio is our Fine Art Torn Edge Prints. It's basically a watercolor print that's had the edges hand torn, and then we paint the edges with an acrylic paint, and then float mount it. So you can see there's a nice drop shadow behind the image there. These prints are lifted off the surface of the page by about a quarter of an inch or so. We put fabric behind them. We hand paint the edges of not only the mat, but also the torn edge of the print itself. We even do clean float mounts, like the top middle one there. You see that image of the newborn baby. That's just not even torn on the edges. It's just a clean presentation. This is one of our most popular products in the studio. And the reason why is because it's so unique. It totally suits that organic, textural, handmade brand that we offer. 
And our clients go googly gaga over this. And one of the main reasons why is because it's so unique and they cannot produce it themselves. It's all handmade here in the studio. You can order your print from the lab and then tear it at home. And I know that sounds really scary to tear a print, but trust me, it's, it's not that hard. And we actually have enrollment open for this course. I'm offering it as an online education course to photographers, the Fine Art Mounting and Torn Edge Prints course. There's five content modules. The whole class is only about two hours, so it's a quick study. You'll be able to be doing uh, these Torn Edge prints yourselves within a day. There's 18 lessons and over $200 in bonus materials. There's a layered presentation template if you wanna uh, use this kind of presentation for your competition prints. There is a digital version as well, so you can show it digitally as well as print it. There's a bonus lesson on how to frame these. I offer them framed my clients, framed and with museum glass, a total wall-ready product. There's a bonus lesson on design as well, on how to put fabrics and paints and mats together, just kind of giving you your visual sensibilities, uh, the, the beginnings of a creative mind, like really helping you understand how color works together, how fabrics work together, how matte works together to, to complement the print itself. And of course, there's a complete materials resource guide on where to get the materials for this. And you can basically start this entire project uh, for prints for about $120 uh, with the equipment that you would need to buy and the materials and supplies. So this course, Fine Art Mounting and Torn Edge Prints is $199. It is only available for a few more days, guys. As a matter of fact, the door closes on this next week and uh, it will not be open again probably until 2018. So if you are, have even thought about creating a handmade product for your clients that's unique, that they cannot produce themselves, that has an enormous high perceived value, I encourage you to join us. Go to fineartmounting.com and you can enroll there uh, for $199 or you can do two payments of $125. We decided to offer a payment plan um, this year. And of course, join us in the Facebook group if you're watching this later on Jewel-TV or on YouTube. This is where we broadcast live every week uh, our talk -a so to speak. So go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Julia Kelleher. And of course, if you want to find me, this is where to find me on other social media. We're especially active, of course, on Facebook and Instagram. So guys, I want to go ahead and take your questions. I know you probably have lots of questions. My coffee is almost cold, but I wanted to just give you a quick, a quick kind of think about your product line and what you're carrying and what maybe you should stop carrying. I mean, not every product is something that works in your studio. So if you've been carrying something for a while and it's not selling or it's kind of sporadic, Maybe it's time to take a second look at it and ask yourself, why isn't this selling? Is there no perceived value? Can I not charge enough for it to actually make any money off of it? Maybe it's too expensive for the client. They don't see it as a high value, so they aren't buying it. And maybe that means you need to do a little bit of education or you need to source the product less expensive somewhere else. And I strongly encourage to kind of really consider having too many vendors. I know when I first started, I saw all these different labs. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. Um, I saw all these different labs and I wanted products from every single one of them. But then I started ordering all these things and it became a true challenge to actually visit all these different labs, have all these different companies I ordered from. So I strongly encourage you to try to stick to one, two, three companies at the most. Then that way you're not completely overwhelmed all the time, especially as you get bus busier and get more clients in your door and have more orders then all of a sudden you're overwhelmed because you just can't keep up with it all and things start dropping through the cracks. So I encourage you to try to just stick with one or two labs, work with the products they have, and you'll find that lab that sings to you um, as you look through them. So I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, some questions here. And uh, those of you who are on live, I appreciate it so, so much. Uh, so let's talk. Jennifer McNaughton says, I find clients want digital files for free or a very low price so they can go print, their, print them somewhere else cheap. And that is so true, I mean, it is. But what that tells me is that, Jennifer, you're not targeting the right kind of ideal client. And this may have something to do with your brand. It may be an issue that's outside the product line that you need to have a hard look at. Um, clients who are willing to pay premium prices respect you for your skill and your talent set. They don't want things cheap because they know you're working hard to produce something for them and that you have a strong skill and that you're very creative in something that they couldn't do. So if clients are coming to you who just want stuff free and cheap, 
chances are they don't respect what you do. They just care about their own pocketbook. And those aren't really the clients that you want. You want clients who love your art for who you are. And to me, that's a branding issue. That may be something that you need to kind of look at in your business as well as maybe look at your technical skills. Maybe you're not ready to jump to that next level and you need to work on your technical more. I have no idea, Jen. I haven't seen your work. I don't, I don't know for sure, but I'm just kind of trying to brainstorm um, authentic ideas to you that will allow you to go, oh, what, what really is the problem here? Maybe it's not the product I'm offering. Maybe it's the overall impression of my business to my potential client. I encourage you to really nail down your ideal customer, who that is, and how you can make her fall in love with you. And that may mean spending a little money on your business to elevate the brand. But clients who, who come in our doors tend to really respect what we do. They know we're working hard for them. And they know that we have to make a living. Like this is this is how I support my family. And I can't just give away things for free or super cheap so they can print somewhere else. Now, do I compromise with them? Heck yes. I do that by offering in my product line digital files. Now, they usually have to buy an art piece of some kind, or less, I should say it's a better value or a better investment for them if they purchase an art product from us as well. Um, but I want my clients to have the digital files and be able to print. But I also know that I need to profit off of that and make a living and support my staff, pay my employees, the overhead on this place, all that stuff factors in. So keep those things in mind and that maybe you're not targeting the right ideal client and you need to think about that a little more and make your business attract that ideal client more. Katie, woohoo, thanks Julia, I'm changing my pricing and your worksheet is perfectly timed. I'm so glad Katie, it's good to see you sweetie. Katie has been a student of mine for, for quite a while since Texas Bowl, was it? was it Katie? I think that's what it was. Okay, Chelsea Nielsen says, glad to have you kicking me in the butt every Tuesday again. <laughs> I'm so glad, that's awesome. My struggle is keeping my product line simple, but having different products for milestone packages. I'm assuming that you mean baby plan, right? How do you keep it simple, but have separate items and offerings? This is so true. And you know, what we do is create a collection in our studio. And basically the, the, the simplest form of create a collection is there's two steps. They have to invest in art product of some kind, and then they invest in their digital files. They get all the files. It's just a matter of if they want high res or low res files. So that's a package. That's create your own collection. So they're purchasing an art product of some kind plus the digitals. Okay. So the digitals make them happy. The, pro the product makes me happy, but also in the long run, it makes them happy because they realize that they just usually don't print on their own. Uh, my clients aren't really DIYers for the most part. So I offer baby plan products that build some kind of finished piece at the end of the baby plan. So for example, if my client does uh, a canvas on the six month session, then on the one year session, we will shoot to match that canvas. So we're, we're photographing the session so that we can build a series over time. And that ends up being their art product in Create a Collection. Does that make sense? So if you can encourage your clients to build a series over time to mark that, I mean, that's really what's valuable to the client is marking that baby's growth over the course of the year, year and a half of your baby plan, right? So by coming up with products that really help them see that, then they're excited and then they're investing every single baby plan session. You know you're doing them a service. They know they're getting something out of it and everybody's happy. Make sense? Okay, Monica says, Julia, do you offer the torn edge framed or also just matted to your clients? Um, this year, we've kind of made a change and all of our, and I'm restructuring my own product line too as we speak, so I, I think that's kind of why this topic was so attractive to me, but we, everything that leaves the studio is going to be wall ready in 2017. So even standard prints are going to be framed. Uh, so yes, our torn edge prints are actually framed with glass, ready for the client to put on the wall. And I think that that is really what helps them see the value because they don't have to do anything. It's all done for them. Order it, bam, put it on the wall. That's how easy it is. Or order it, bam, here's an album. You can look at it every day of your life and hand it on to your kids when, when, when they're older and you've kicked the bucket. That has value to the client because so many of my clients come and they all have been purchasing digital files from me for a while, but now they're getting to the point where like, oh, I'm so glad we're printing something with you because I haven't even printed anything from the last session. And I just sit here and cringe and I go, oh, I knew that was going to happen. Like I knew you would get the digitals and you would not print them. It's just, we get busy. I mean, come on, my clients have new babies or multiple children in their families. How on earth are they going to have time to print or let alone create an album? 
And granted, there's very few who do. It's a, it's a bell curve for sure. But most people are in the middle of that bell curve. There's no way they could, they, they'll do it. A year goes by and they come back for their milestone session, cake smash at one year, and they still haven't printed anything for the newborn session. And it's, it's kind of funny to me now. I, I giggle in a, in, a, in a kind of affectionate way because I know they have the best of intentions. And that's why we decided to do credit collections so that my clients would actually print, get something printed through us and get it done. And they all say to me, I'm so glad we printed something because I still haven't printed anything else from that session. And at least I get to look and walk by something every day in my home. So they learn through education and over time that that is the best uh, value for what they're doing. Okay, more questions. Linda's so awesome. She's like, can you questions? It's great. Well, we also have, I have to be careful when we're streaming live because we can only have so many computers like actually streaming video because I'm trying to upload stream to you guys and they're trying to download stream. So we just, we just have to <laughs> make sure we're not overtaxing the system too much. Okay, Tonise, oh, what a beautiful name. Tonise Frazier, where can we find the product freebie chart? It's really helpful. Thank you. You're welcome, Tonise. Um, go to jewel-tv.com, opt in, and you'll see the latest episode up there at the top. Click there, and there'll be a link in there for you to download the freebie uh, inside Jewel-TV. And then, of course, once you opt in, you have access to all the archives, all the freebies from the past, and any future uh, freebies and episodes as well. Hey, Fiona said, if starting out, what should I offer? I have my first baby shoot next week. <laughs> oh, Fiona, that's a big question. I definitely suggest doing the product worksheet and starting off super simple. I mean, for now, just mounted prints, maybe canvases, and an, an album or two. Just keep it simple. The KISS theory, keep it simple, stupid. Like, simple, stupid. Like, don't even go overboard right now. Uh, just make sure your clients can see the images every day in a printed format, whether that be on the wall, in an album, whatever. And you're, of course, welcome to offer digitals. You're welcome to, to use our model if you want. Um, and we offer our model to photographers in our store. So go to jewel-education.com if you want to look at that there. Um, but overall, just keep it simple in the beginning. Add slowly over time. Don't overwhelm yourself. If you try to carry too much at once, you, your head will spin and then uh, you won't do a good job and then your products won't be profitable and your clients won't get the service they expect and need for that matter. Okay, Alicia says, do you feel like acrylic blocks are a good product for newborn photographers? Oh, Alicia, I think it just depends on your brand. Again, be careful because it's an expensive product. It is a little trendy, but if your brand is super trendy and your clients look at that as crazy unique and something they couldn't get anywhere else, then yeah, maybe it's a product to carry for you. So go through the six factor test and ask yourself that same, those same questions about acrylic blocks. In my studio, I would never use acrylic blocks. My brand is very textural, organic, uh, very elegant feeling. And to me, the crystal blocks, you know, like I have a crystal block just as an example here. This is one of our, we had one of my awards printed in crystal. But this is a crystal block, and you, what happens is, is you put the image inside kind of thing, and um, it looks really cool. Now, as an award, I think it's awesome, and it's displayed here in our studio. But um, my, since my brand is so matte and textured and organic, I probably wouldn't carry these. So, but again, that's me. That's not you. Your business may be colorful and bright and shiny and happy and loving, and this would be a great product for that. So again, I can't really answer those questions without fully understanding your brand. Uh, and, but I encourage you, download the product sheet, do the six factor test, and that will help you at least see the pros and cons and make a, a better informed decision, if that makes sense. Okay, IVB says, how do you feel about a la carte products? A la carte is a great model. I know many amazing photographers, I should say, who sell printed a la carte products only. They don't even touch the digitals. And they have an enormously successful business. There's nothing wrong with that. And we do offer a la carte digitals here in my studio, but they're a little bit more expensive than investing in Creative Collection. As a matter of fact, you can get you know, a select number of files for the same price that you could invest in Creative Collection. So that's why most of my clients end up going Creative Collection because not only do they get a print, but they get all their images on disc instead of just a few select few. So do once in a while, do I once in a while sell the a la carte digital files, of course. People who are on a super limited budget or like maternity sessions where mom doesn't really want to, you know, invest in a huge screaming wall portrait of her pregnant on the wall. I mean, really, who does? Some people do, but it's not, it's not something I push because I know that women are particularly self-conscious when they're pregnant about how they look, but they do want to keep the memory of being pregnant alive, especially if it's their first or their last baby. So a la carte, I do sell it. You can build an entire business model off just a la carte. 
but just keep in mind the strategy. I mean, clients are still going to want to uh, bet, get the best value for their investment. And that value is mental in their own head. They usually determine how much they want to spend on uh, portraits and photography based on decisions they've made in the past about doing that. So if, for example, I mean, say for like tonight, Valentine's Day, right? Happy Valentine's Day, by the way, everybody. Um, so say, for example, my husband wants to take me out to dinner and I go, where do you want to go to dinner tonight? Or, or, or I should say, how much do you want to spend on dinner tonight, honey? He's like, oh, 50 bucks. Okay, great. So then I get all dressed up, fancy, take him off to a really fancy restaurant and they serve us and give us a free amuse bouche just to get our palates excited. And um, then they bring up a wine list and they cater to us in the bar before we get our table. And by the time we've sat down, we already have this incredible experience and we haven't even spent any money yet. At that point, the 50 bucks my husband said is going to go out the window. He's like, it's Valentine's Day. Are you kidding me? We're spending a hundred, right? Twice the budget. Well, it's the same thing with your clients. If they've spent a little bit of money in the past on what we call a shoot and burn photographer, and then they come to you and expect to spend only $200, $250, that's what they have set up in their mindset based on past experience. So, but if you wow them with an incredible brand, incredible service, attention to detail, a beautiful printed product line that's unique, all of a sudden that $250 budget is gonna go out the window because they realize there's so much more to you than that other photographer, if that makes sense. So you can sell a la carte, but just remember that sometimes selling with packages makes it a little easier uh, in order, because you don't have to be a salesy salesperson. Your pricing will do the selling for you, if that makes sense. So by all means, I would experiment with all types of pricing, really kind of feel each one out, build a pricing structure based on the different methods, like set packages, create a collection, a la carte. And then from there, determine what you think will be the most strategic in your studio, which will sell you, which will get you to that happy place average that you want to be every single time and that will do your clients the most service as well. Okay, Caitlin says, where can we find the torn, torn image, edge image class? Go to fineartmounting.com, Caitlin. That's where that is located. And like I said, it's only on sale for another few days. I think like five more, maybe six more days at the most. And we're not probably not gonna offer it again in 2017. It'll be a 2018 thing. I've just got too many things on my plate this year, um, unless we get a ton of requests. But um, at this point, this is the only time we're offering it in 2017. Okay, Melissa Henry says, how long does it take to do the framing portion of the torn edge prints once you get the hang of it? Trying to decide if I wanna do the framing myself or let my framing vendor do it. Good question, Melissa. I order my frames already joined. And of course, this is an extra bonus lesson in, inside uh, the torn edge print class um, at fineartmounting.com. But so I insert the image into the already joined frame so it comes to me as a square, like already joined. And then we put paper backing on it and the hardware. It literally takes 15 or 20 minutes to do each one at the most. And because framers are so cost prohibitive for me, as far as being able to pass that cost on to, my consu to, the, to the consumer, I can actually do the work and charge less to my clients and give them a better value versus them going to the frame shop. And I just want wall-ready art. I want my clients to have it easy where they can just say, oh, take it home, pop it on the wall. How beautiful is that? Okay. Oh, more questions. I love this. You guys are awesome. Uh, Tony says, what if clients want small gift prints to avoid large wall prints, which is the goal? How do we get them towards a wall portrait or an album sale? Again, Tony, this is, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. It's such a pretty name and I would feel terrible if I'm hacking it up. So uh, please slap me upside the head if I'm not pronouncing it right. Uh, this is a huge question, Tony. And the reason being is because Preparation for the sale begins long before the ordering appointment ever happens. You have to educate in the, cl the client in the beginning what you do, why you do it, and you have to plant the seed of the sale is what I call it, and then water it and let it grow. A client is not going to necessarily, unless they have it in their mind already, they're not going to necessarily invest in a large wall portrait or an album at the ordering appointment without even knowing that that was a possibility to begin with. Clients are always going to be somewhat price sensitive. What matters is, is that you make that price worth it, okay? So the pre-consultation, talking to the clients, shooting for a specific product, they know that you're shooting for a specific product. That's what's gonna get them excited about the process. And when it's a special occasion like a newborn or a wedding or a high school senior or a family Christmas, I mean, that is the time to be doing 
good wall art for your home. And clients do somewhat know that, but you have to offer the service and educate them on what's possible. They have no idea what's possible with their images and how would they know unless you helped educate them through that. So it's a, it's, that's all, it's honestly a bigger question than I can tackle right this minute here on Talk A Latte, but just know that you have to educate them from long before and be shooting for a specific product and they know that you're shooting for that. Terry, hi Terry. Terry's one of my online mentoring students. How do you handle that client that says they have no wall space? Oh, that's so true. But I have lots of beautiful products that are very nice and high end without requiring a lot of space. Like our torn edge prints, for example, are 16 by 20. They're not very big, um, but they're a beautiful high end product and they would fit pretty much anywhere. I sell sets of three framed 11 by 14s or framed 8 by 10s in sets of three. And they're, re again, ready to go on the wall. They're a smaller product. Albums, great way to, to not sell when they say they don't have wall space because it is a common problem. I mean, some people do ha not have wall space. So what do you provide for them? Something. I mean, really what it comes down to, guys, is if they're going to hire a professional photographer and not do anything with the images, that just makes no sense whatsoever. And if a client, if you say that to a client, you go, hey, why are you hiring me if you're not going to print these? Why are you hiring me if you're not going to do anything with them? Then they go, oh, yeah. See, people are so honed in on digital files that they, and the digital medium and Facebook and swiping on an iPad. I mean, there's actually 65% more emotional reaction from someone holding a framed portrait or looking at an image like this in their hand than there is swiping on a computer screen. 65% more emotional value in this than there is electronically. And once people start to be educated in this and understand it, they'll realize that having something to walk by every day on their wall in their home is so much more emotionally and personally, uh, personal satisfaction than having it be left on a computer device that you actually have to log into to see. That's the, the biggest difference, I think. And if we can educate our clients on that, we have won. We have like helped make photography, you know, what it, what it should be. I was going to say great again, and then I just was like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, Jennifer Harris says, hi, Jennifer. Uh, do you frame with glass or acrylic? I frame my uh, prints with glass. Uh, museum glass. I want the anti-glare, the uh, museum quality, the UV protectant, and acrylic, of course, can do that. Now, super large pieces, it's acrylic just because glass gets super heavy. And um, at that point, just working with it, you know, a 40 by 30 by 40 print with glass is a challenge to put together. So without breaking it. So we use acrylic at that point. Okay, Monica said, I find that clients always opt for canvas instead of framed art because of the price difference. Yeah, I mean, that is true. I think it just depends on whether the way to kind of explore that question with them is to ask them about their home design and decor. And is it, if they have a huge value sentimentally there with a good design, then they may want to do a framed piece because it'll work more with the decor. I have a client who's been doing canvas for so long. She's so sick of it. She's like, I need framed prints. I don't care how much it costs because I'm sick and tired of my house looking like a museum. Like all these simple, um, clean edge canvases everywhere. She's like, I need to mix it up. So I think it just depends on you um, honing in on their interior design desires and what would look good in the space. Andrea says, I focus on seniors, families, and children. I need different products for each. Any advice on how to narrow down my products so that I can keep my clients happy and myself sane? I'm new to IPS or in-person sales, so trying hard not to be all over the place with products. This is the temptation of being a photographer in this world, yes. May I ask you this, Andrea? Why do you need different products for all different types of photography that you do? Do you really need it? We have the same 10, 10 11 products that every single client is offered, whether they're a family, a newborn, a baby plant, well, baby plants have a couple extra things, but. Um, a senior, whatever. It's, it's the same 11 products on our product menu. So do you really need to have different products for every single different line that you do, seniors, families, and children? I don't think so. I think you can keep it simple. Ask yourself if you really need that. And if you do, then go for it. But you're going to be juggling a lot of different products. And, you're, and the worst thing, this is what I think is even more taxing than just you being confused, is your client being confused. When you try to offer too much, they check out. 
they see all these products. Wow, my camera is getting lighter in here. So my camera is like um, getting all bright. Let's see if we can turn the gain down a little bit so you guys aren't like, there we go. That's all better. Uh, it's getting lighter and lighter here this morning and, and the sun comes through the cupola up here. So the, the light just bounces everywhere. Goes, fire everywhere. <laughs> anyway, um, so you don't want to confuse your client. I mean, if they see too many options and in the order appointment, they're going to be like, whoa, do I have to make this decision now? And then you've just screwed yourself, right? So the fewer products you have, the easier it is on you and the easier it is on your client. And I think that's what's most important. Okay, guys, I think that's all the questions we have for now, or at least all the ones. Are there any more, Belinda? I think that's it, right? A few more. Should I go ahead and try answering those? I can probably log on to my thing here. I just got this new MacBook Pro, and it has the touch-sensitive login. It's pretty neat. Okay, let me get to Facebook here and see if I can actually see some questions. Belinda's been so sweet. She's been printing them off for me so that I don't have to run the live, the live feed here. Okay. There we go. Uh, let's see, view more comments. Uh, Susan says, hmm, online mentoring program? Yes, it just started last week. I do a six, week, six weekly meetings with uh, three to four students online, and we are discussing all of this right now. Products, pricing, we're helping them get their packages structured, their IPS and their in-person sales done. Um, so yeah, that's, we'll probably be offering that one more time again this year. Okay. More. Amy Henderson says, Canvas, Canvas groupings, frame canvases, are you pushing these and how do price a larger quantity per sale? Good question, Amy. Amy, I only offer gallery wrap canvas and that's it for canvas. Now they can do framed canvas, but for the most part, we just do gallery wrap. And if they, a, a gallery wraps single print is the single print price. If they do it in a grouping, it's not discounted. Um, it's just, it is what it is. So if they want to build a series of three, they have to buy all three. I don't necessarily discount them in a grouping. Can you? You could, but remember, Canvas has an incredibly high cost of goods to it. Canvas is expensive for us. And so you really don't make that much money off of Canvas. And so by discounting a grouping, I, I don't know, I think you're shooting yourself in the foot a little bit. But again, it's up to you. If, however, you package Canvas with products that you can make a decent profit on, then you lower that cost of sale overall for the package and you, and you wind up being pretty profitable. So just be careful how you do it. I wouldn't sell a grouping at a discount unless I also sold it with something else where I could make a pad, uh, pad the profit margin at the end. Okay, Tony said, you're saying it right. Yay, <laughs> I'm glad, it's a beautiful name. Uh, Danielle says, I want to offer albums, but I'm afraid on the design layout. <laughs> I totally get it. Danielle, it's, it's scary. A lot of my albums, though, are like one image per page. Super simple, super clean. The only time I do lots of images per page and text and graphics and baby statistics and stuff is in our top of the line custom albums that start at around 1500. So uh, that's because that's a lot of work. That's a lot of time investment. I mean, we spend hours designing those those those. Uh, those albums, so the investment is, is because of that time factor involved and the skill set, the graphic design necessary to do that. Now, where do you learn how to do this? Well, there's some places like ProSelect has an album software that gives you pre-made templates, so does Fundy. There's lots of different companies out there that help you to create beautiful albums, and there's companies out there that offer templates in Photoshop if you don't want to invest in software. So we actually have a couple, do we still have those albums? We still have a couple albums in our store that Belinda's made, baby books and things like that that you can just drop your images into and send it off to the lab. So I would look for things like that or for software that will help you design um, and at least give you pre-made templates that you can then build on from there. It'll give you a starting point and make it not quite so overwhelming. Okay, our last question is Claire Beverly, how do you go about signing your work when getting framed products from a supplier? That's a really good question. And I take it you're talking about like when you um, log in to Miller's and order a frame print, they send it to you with glass and everything all ready to go. And that's a lot of the reason why I like to frame things myself, because I want to sign the work. And if there's glass already on top of it and they've put paper backing on the back, you have to like tear into that to actually sign the print, which stinks. So my solution to that is don't let the lab frame it. I do all my own framing, and that fine art mounting course has a bonus lesson on how to do that, how to insert your frame. It's super easy. There's just a couple trade secrets that you need to know, and that's really it. Um, and I sign the work and, of course, frame it ourselves. So, and everything that leaves here, as far as an art product go, 
is signed, even my albums. We open up the back cover, I sign the back, put in the year that it was done, and um, that adds value to the piece, especially as you know, your reputation as an artist begins to grow and clients see your work as you and your style. To have a signed copy of your work is add some value to the piece, so that's important to remember too. Okay, I will go ahead and see if there's any more last minute questions. My coffee is totally cold at this point. So you know how we are. We like to log off when the coffee gets cold. Um, but yeah, I think that's, let's see, no problems on my desk. Oh, yay. Michelle's telling me that technical looks good. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Um, and it's working like a champ on the iPhone as well. Perfect. We got to love new software that works right. <laughs> right? Okay. I think that's um, about it. Is that, that about it, hon, on the class? That's it? Awesome. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you so, so much for being here and for watching live on Facebook. It's so much more fun this way because I get to interact with you guys and answer questions that I know you have. Um, so we are going to continue to do this. We'll uh, come up, we have to do a taco latte meeting the, today to kind of determine topics for next week and the following weeks to come. But go to jewel-tv.com to opt in. And then of course, you'll get notification when we do go live and you'll also get notification for archives being posted. You'll have complete access to all the former archives as well as all the freebies as well. So I, I hope today's freebie will help you at least kind of go through that six factor test when you're determining your product line and give you some ideas and at least give you more, a more, conf more confidence that the product line that you want to deliver to your products is one that will actually make you money, that will sell, that will make the client happy and that will actually be profitable. So. Have a great day, everybody. And again, thank you so, so much for being here. It means the world to me. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.